Is there a Monty? Oh, sorry, I was late. Last meeting ran over a bit. Uh, Welcome to your meeting. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't see Monty yet. Uh, he may or may not show up. Okay, let me see. Where's my agenda page here? Right. So, um, so first topic on the agenda is um, a variation on the on the usual theme, the usual theme being what is the status of viewer beta and viewer development. Yes, my recorder is going. Uh, and I think it's even working. Um, the um, So uh, the status of viewer development is that we're not using it anymore um, and it will disappear shortly. Um, and uh, the status of viewer beta is that, <laughs> yeah, and the status of viewer beta is that it's got the code in it that's in beta now, in the beta channel now. Um, and uh, when that moves to the release channel, shortly after that moves to the release channel, we will probably be deploying the new update service. And when we deploy the new update service, then we will stop using the viewer beta channel. And uh, how will we refer to these things then? Because we can't say, is it in beta or is it in dev? Right. So um, what we will have is, you know, projects will have names. Um, I'll, I, hopefully we'll be able to keep people to, you know, simple one word names. Um, and each one will have its own public well, eventually public uh, repository. Yes, each project will have a, its own its own sources. Um, the uh, you know, as usual, things we're working on won't become public until number one, we've announced them, and number two, the code is deemed safe to share. That is, it's not going to do any any do any any great damage if people start experimenting with it. Um, and, and we're not going to give you stuff that we know is so immature that it would be a bad idea for, for you to be playing with it yet. Um, the the um, projects will um, typically put out a project viewer and or a beta viewer, uh, and then, yeah, everything ultimately should be based on viewer release, and all of our projects will be based on viewer release at some point in its evolution. And the way it will work is that um, when when a project is ready, is believed to be of release quality, it will be put into a release candidate version that's uh, built as a release viewer and deployed in one of these testing cohorts within the release channel. Um, so some number of users, and we get to pick the number, will get upgraded to that version. And, um, yeah, uh, and and um, after some period of time as a release candidate, when we've looked at the results, um, but just to, I'll, I'll get back to that in just a second, Trinity. Um, then one of those viewers will be promoted to the default download. And that will just be a change in its status. It will not be a rebuild of the viewer the way it today. One of the things that happens is we put things out in the beta channel. We run with them for a while. You know, we test them. We decide one of them is good enough. And then when we decide that's good enough and we want to promote it to the release viewer, well, to change the channel, we have to change the build. So we have to rebuild it. So it's actually not, you know, ever in a, in a perfect sense, the exact same software. Um, in the new scheme, when we decide to promote something, it's just a change of its status in the in the viewer version manager, and everybody gets that upgrade. And well, everybody who isn't on one of the test cohorts gets that upgrade, and uh, um, 
and it's the exact same build of the exact same software. So, um, yeah, and that's the way the sims have been doing it for a while. The simulators do that, right? So the simulators build a, a, a simulator, put it out on Magnum or Blue Steel, and then when it, they decide that that's the one that goes to the real grid, every the, the same build gets deployed everywhere. Um, and then what will happen is that the... Uh, um, is that the uh, uh, the other projects that are that are at least the ones that are at release candidate status will have to merge that that project out to their repositories, rebuild, retest, and put out a new release candidate to be eligible to be promoted again. Right. So everybody has to get caught up with whatever has been promoted. Uh, the difference. So the version numbers. The way it will work is that. Um, all release candidates, well, the current release viewer will be, let's say, 3.6.8, right? Um, when that gets put in, made the default, we will pull its sources to the viewer release repository, um, and then we'll increment the version number, the third level version number by one, and everybody will pull that new version number. So the release candidates will all have a uh, a version number that's one higher than the than the current default release. Okay, the, so that covers version numbers, right? And I know there's a lot of cum questions accumulating here, so let me let me back up and try to um, start back at Trinity. Oh, we, okay, so. Uh, about giving you early broken stuff. The, the idea is that we're not going to give you early broken stuff. The idea is we're only going to put things there that we think are release quality. Um, things that we think might still be broken, we'll put out as betas, um, and, and ask for people to test them as betas. Um, so Trinity's question was, will users be able to pick and choose what they play with? And the answer is yes. Um, so there will be the alternate viewers page will list all the viewers that are out there, both any release candidates that are in the release channel and any betas and any project viewers. They'll all be, you know, in separate sections, um, you know, with increasingly dire warnings about how unstable this might be. Um, the, uh, the, uh, and, and you'll be able to pick them. If you're running a release candidate viewer, you won't be offered an upgrade into a different release candidate viewer or into the, the, the new default. If you're running a release candidate, if you're in a, a candidate cohort, you'll get offered upgrades within that cohort, but not moved out of it. Um, does that, does that make sense? I just want to go back a little bit on the what Sienna asked. So, if we're not able to see code until it's fully release worthy, then that's going to set third party viewers further behind in well, being the, able to release. The intent is that that uh, you know most things by the time they get to project viewer status, and certainly by the time they get to beta viewer status, will have public repositories. Because uh, obviously we also have to do testing in our when we implement it to see how that works with with our viewers. Yeah, no, uh, right, and we want we want that to be true. So just just as we have with Chewy and with S Sunshine, uh, you know, you had access to those sources before they were even in beta, and 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 that will be the that will be the plan here. Um, well, the the rule will still be that. Uh, as you've had amongst yourselves for a long time, you shouldn't put it in your releases until the people who originated it, in this case us, have put it right. in a release. But putting it into a testing cohort counts as having put it in release for those purposes. Well, if we take something that, if, that if you've got something in, heels. if you've got something in, in VDEV that fixes, potentially fixes a serious issue that we have, for example, um, we may grab that and throw it into a beta and throw it out to our beta testers only, or even just test it internally to see if that actually does fix the bug. And if yeah. it does, then we'll consider when, what's the timeline that you guys are going to release that in compared to what's our timeline and whether or not we're going to be able to keep it in there and release it after you guys do. Right. But with, with not being able to see it 
ahead of time until it's release worthy, um, then we can't test it into. So it, it throws us back. If you understand what I mean. Right. One of the things that we that that we haven't really talked about extensively, and we haven't attempted to make any any sort of policy around, but which I suspect pretty strongly we're going to we're going to end up working our way up to is that critical bug fixes are going to end up getting published in um, reposit standalone repositories of their own uh, and merged to multiple branches so that they'll end up getting merged into into all the release candidates and and since you know um, yeah exactly um, well as long as we know that it really is the fix and it's the right fix but uh, I, I think that's I think that's basically true Right, we we um, it's in everybody's interest to get you know really important bug fixes out as widely as as possible as quickly as possible. Um, and one of the things yeah um, yeah this is the this is the very first place I've ever worked where where a you know a crash rate of nine percent was considered good and. Uh, that's, you know, I, I'm still, after three years, I'm still not really, haven't really got my head around that yet. Um, so, um, actually, one of the other, yeah, um, one of the other changes that I put in in the, in the course of doing this, uh, the changes around this um, is that I, I, a couple of the changes I, I, I put in um, better handling of channel names and version numbers and in the build. They're they're propagated more correctly and more simply through the build. Um, so you may find yourself, you know, if you if you go to edit uh, ll version viewer dot h, you'll discover it's not there anymore. Um, uh, and um, the uh, the uh, another thing I did was add a new statistic that gets sent at login time for the duration of the previous session in seconds. Um, it's called last exec dur last last exec duration, um, and I'm hoping to use that to get uh, uh, some better statistics on on sort of mean time to failure um, for and and the average length of successful and unsuccessful sessions. Um, distribution of them and how that differs across platforms and so forth. So, um, <laughs> yeah, well, that'd be that would be an interesting way to use them. All right. Um, so we'll see. I I um, I have I have gotten the viewer to create that statistic, and I've gotten it into the into the pipeline. Um, there are back-end changes that are needed to get it out to where I can build reports on it. And I, I actually don't know how to do those changes yet, but I figured, you know, I'd start at the beginning of the pipeline and work my way through. So sooner or later, we'll, we'll, we'll get that. Um, so, uh, let's see. Um, just a quick question. Has it really been an issue in the past, I don't know, year? Of any of the significant third-party viewers releasing Linen code before Linen released it? No, not that I can remember. No. I mean, I, I, actually, you know, I, uh, I, uh, I, I want to say, uh, I, I think that the relationship between the third-party development community in general and um, and certainly. Uh, you know all the major third-party viewers, uh, and Linden Lab has has been um, extremely useful and and beneficial to everybody. Uh, we've certainly um, we've certainly enjoyed having stuff uh, contributed from you that that has has made improvements to what we're doing, and um, I think that you know we've collaborated with you pretty well. So. Could it get better? Yeah, obviously. Everything can always get better. Um, and we'll, 
we'll keep working towards that. But um, I am I am concerned that though that as a as a side effect of the, these changes that third party viewers may fall um, for the behind. I mean, for example, Sunshine was important. The third party viewers all get Sunshine out, and um, and we have it. and even yeah. out of you. Um, yeah. And and I, I'm under the impression that was kind of the hope that we would get it out before you. Um, and uh, but my concern is that for future well, we, things, as a side uh, effect, we may be this may put us further behind in being able to keep up with features that you guys put out. No, that's that's definitely not the intent. Um, and no, I'm uh, sure it isn't. I'm, I'm just gonna, saying it may, I'm be, be, it may become a side effect. It should be. I uh, I don't think considered. it will. And in fact, I I want to I want to. I think it's, it, I'm not speaking out of turn to tell you this. Um, you know, the success of the Sunshine Project in managing a major feature transition in collaboration with and in, and, and in sync with the, the third party viewer development community has not gone unnoticed. Um, and, and the people involved within the lab that I, I mean, um, the, uh, you know the people involved have gotten a lot of kudos for how well it's gone and for how well the uh, the third party viewer community has adopted the technology. I mean, we're not done yet, right? We haven't thrown the switch yet. We don't know what's going to happen when we do. But um, but uh, you know the apparent the apparent success to date has has uh, it has you know has gotten a lot of has gotten a lot of favorable notice. Um, so, um, and, uh, you know, I've, I have other projects out there that are not quite ready to talk to you yet, but they're, you know, they're working with me to, to prepare what you're going to need when, when they are ready. Um, so there, there'll be new stuff. Um, and I keep bugging the ones that we haven't gotten anything from the interest list project and, uh, and so on. Um, that we haven't gotten public sources from yet. And, you know, I think we're going to be able to get you things in, uh, in enough time that you won't be noticeably behind. Besides, you keep gaining viewer share on us anyway. So, you know. Well, no, but that's not my concern. It's, it's not about, um, you know, how many users we have. It's, uh, it's really that I don't want because I know that um, certainly management has somewhat seen third-party viewers as a bit of a burden, and and we've tried to change that over the years. And so I, I wouldn't want to end up with another thing where Lynn and I releases this really cool feature, but it can't get adopted for a long time because the third-party viewers couldn't get to it soon enough. And that's happened in the past, and, and I just wouldn't right. want well, to see that happen again. So the next the next test of that is materials. So let's see whether we can make that as... as E equally smooth. Um, I'm understanding. Stuff at repositories, like, still continue. S sorry, um, you're breaking up. Is this better? Can you hear me it's now better. a little bit better? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I um, think your noise canceling was... was uh... Well, I had my mic kind of far away. Um, but I think, if I'm understanding it right, uh, the separate rep uh, repositories, like Sunshine, will still exist under the new way of doing things, right? Right. And one of the things that I'm going to do, I haven't, I, I know how to do it and I haven't actually done it yet. And, uh, but I will, before we start rolling this out is I will have, a a, an automatically maintained wiki page, uh, you know, that generated by a script that actually goes through what are all the, uh, what are all the project and beta and, uh, release candidate builds and lists what are the corresponding repositories from which they're built. Right. So uh, that's, I'm not going to, that's not going to be on the page where users are expected to download those things because I think that would clutter it up and make, and, and make it confusing, but I'll have a separate one, you know, somewhere under the, the snowstorm regime, uh, that you'll, that you'll be able to find. Um, so, uh, and and so you know we will have a, a a routine mechanism for for keeping published what are the current public development efforts and and what are the current sources for them. Um.
So, you know, Bitbucket, Linden Lab, fewer development materials is the one for, for, for materials, right? Which is still not quite ready for prime time. I, I wouldn't call it a beta yet, which is why it hasn't been built as one. But uh, we're getting there. I'm running it now. Works. Um, so, uh, you know, like everything else, all all process changes require tweaking as we go along. I'm sure we'll find reasons to, to tweak this one. Um, but, uh, yeah, <laughs> uh, um, the, uh, but it, uh, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll do better with it. Um, we're, we're improving our, our version manager, viewer version manager infrastructure, uh, quite a lot. Uh, it's going to be much more flexible and, and comprehensive than it has been. Uh, and, uh, I'm, I'm even sort of toying with the idea of, uh, providing the, uh, the management infrastructure of that as a service that you guys can take advantage of. Um, since we're about to prune out almost all your old versions um, with the server-side baking change, uh, you may decide that you want to keep people updated. Um, and if you if you wanted to, uh... yeah, we did actually. We 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 do actually have uh, a full-time person on the on the build infrastructure now, and he's he's really good. Uh, tell you who he is because I don't want him distracted uh, I have a lot of I have a lot of jobs for him to do but uh, he's he's gung-ho and he's 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 doing good stuff so hopefully the that will get more and more stable um, but uh, but I'm not talking about a build service or even a download service I'm just talking about a um, providing what we have now, which is when the viewer comes up or every hour or so afterwards and at login, it checks to see whether there's a new version available and gets told whether there is one and is it optional or not, um, and then gets handed a URL, right? So <laughs> the um, uh, if, if you wanted to provide a set of URLs and what version numbers go with them and what should uh, yeah, he was he was here in the Boston office for his first couple of weeks as an as an employee, and we timed with all of our requirements before we let him go out to San Francisco. Um, um, once you're you won't get out of the RC group until that until that version is promoted to being the default, and then by virtue of the fact that it's been promoted, you're back in the default again, and therefore you could get moved to another. You could randomly be assigned to a different RC group. Are all of your so? Let's say you have three different. Um, well, there'll be release numbers, and I suppose um, are they all going to show up in stats? Yes. So, yeah, I mean they will. Um, what the way it works is that we'll set a target number of users we want to be running, a target minimum number of users we want to be running any given candidate, and the um, the uh, version manager will begin offering it to to some fraction of the users until that number is reached, and then it'll stop uh, it'll stop giving it out. Although if somebody downloads it and runs it by hand, they they're still running it. It's it's uh, there is an opt out flag, um, but it's luck of the draw if you don't set the if you don't clear the off opt out flag. There's a flag that lets you say I don't want to ever get a, a candidate. Are you going to also encourage them to uh, file bug reports? Well, we always encourage everybody to file bug reports, right? But what I mean is, if if I'm Joe Schmo user um, and I find a bug on the ERC, I, I don't know where do you file a bug report 
Are you going to have that kind of some kind of documentation well, in the uh, U.S. They, that that? If you're if you're in an RC, you should just file it against the in bug as a release. Well, but what I mean a is, a lot field. of people don't even know what Jira is, as we're oh, also well, finding. Those people wouldn't file bug reports anyway. That's the way it goes. That's the nice thing about having um, specific answers. <laughs> My yeah, it is. My suspicion is that most of the people who who run the beta viewer now, or who or the smaller number who run the development viewers now, will keep on doing so. I mean, they'll seek out the new feature versions, and they'll which aren't going to be hard to find. I mean, it's not going to be difficult, um, and they'll. And it'll end up in the you know in the test versions, and they'll file the bug reports that they file now. Um, we'll also get some other people who aren't getting those now, and whether or not we get bug reports from them, at least we'll know what their crash rates are. Yeah, for crash crash testing, I can see the obvious advantage there. I think we'll actually get a more representative sample this way. One of the things I've figured out how to do. I haven't installed it in, in uh, the main JIRAs yet, but uh, I put it in the materials bug report. JIRA is um, a way to require that the uh, that the environment field have a viewer version number somewhere in it. Uh, so uh, We have that. <laughs> yeah. We even, it, we even it have just won't let you enter the bug report. Uh, our until users you do that. give us that. It even tells us what skin they're using now. That's good. That's good. It's uh, useful. But, um, uh, yeah, for crashing, because there was a time when we accidentally, you'll probably remember this, uh, we accidentally used a different channel for our Windows, Mac, and Linux builds and discovered that Mac has a ridiculously high crash rate. And um, now we have crash reporting and we can fix these things. But it was would have been useful then to have things on a different channel. So there are a couple more questions that have accumulated here in, in chat. Uh, Takoda asked... Um, how will that affect those of us who commonly test multiple versions? So um, the short answer is I'm not 100% sure. Um, the and, and the reason is that I, I'm not... Well, so with respect to project viewers and beta viewers and release viewers, there's no difference, right? Those are installed with different names, and uh, at least if you're not running Linux. Um, and, and so... They they end up in in different places and they don't conflict with each other, um, and that's that's fine. I don't actually know, and I think it may vary by platform. What will happen when you when you uh, upload multiple release candidates and try to switch back and forth between them? Um, I haven't tried it. Um, Times okay. It's... Oh, and then uh, there was another question that I know I missed here. Uh, let me go back and find it. Um, okay, so Jonathan asked, "Will the RC viewer have some obvious visual signal that you're running a test candidate?" And the answer is no, because it won't actually be any different than the release viewer. It will be what is going to be the release viewer. So it won't, and in fact. You know, if we were to tell it that at the moment it's still a candidate, which we're not telling it, by the way, um, two minutes later we could throw the switch and say that's the default, and any signal that it was giving would be incorrect, right? Yeah, I, I think it would work if you install them in different places. Um, I, I, I'm pretty sure it will work on a on a Mac, which is where I do most of my testing. Um, I assume that it's similarly true on Windows, but I, I don't. Having not attempted it and tested it, I don't want to make any any uh, strong assertions about that. Um, so um, there is a, a strong visual signal now in our builds, at least, for whether you're running a project, a test viewer, which is what we call, which is the status you now get by default, not developer, but test. Um, because it's shorter and simpler and it matches what the icon says. So I figured let's change it since we're changing everything around. Um, when you're running a test viewer, you get a, um, a deep red top menu bar. And when you're running a uh, 
project viewer, it stays the same as it has been for a while now. You get the pale blue project bar, and when you're running a, a, a menu bar, and when you're running a beta viewer, it's kind of this, I don't know, I call it purple. Um, it's this dark bluish purple um, blue menu bar. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then and then when you're running a release viewer, it's the it's the same gray. It, it always is. Um, so, um, um, so we've got Monty here, and we've got a few questions for Monty. Um, providing we're jump. finished this topic. Uh, uh, any other questions on on this? And we haven't actually started doing it yet, so it's you know. Um, we're, we st we have some infrastructure to deploy, and we're having to learn how to do that. Um, okay. Um, so let's go on to questions for Monty. Monty. Hello. I think Nick's oh, you're here. here. And Nix is here. Well, actually, we've got immediately. We've got questions about. Um, HTTP and, and that email that I sent you, uh, and you've seen the Jira, and although we never did get logs from, um, or, or who was it? You needed logs. I can't remember anyways what logs we got, but do you have any news? <laughs> do I have any news? The, um, what I'm interested in is sort of prevalence of what's been seen. Uh, we've got uh, Alexios. Uh, the one individual who is uh, providing information who seems to have a unique problem. Is I've been looking for, um, well, what you've seen in the logs is an error code. And I don't have the symbolic name for that thing. But what it is is a consistency check on what HTTP is coming down the pipeline and whether what it claims about the data is actually what data is received. And, um, a lot of these, and actually, let me see if I can get the error code out of this thing. Uh, one moment. And while Monty's doing that, just, Sienna, just so you guys know, um, one of the things we did different with our release is we um, turned on uh, use HTTP um, big texture fetching. And although that seems to have sped things up for a lot of people, it's also caused uh, a lot of problems, slow resing, um, like really slow resing in some cases, inventory not loading, um, weird issues. And if we get the user to change that debug back to off, um, everything generally is fine for them again. So the question I sent to Monty was when uh, things get flipped to server-side baking on the server-side, are these people having this problem going to be screwed? We use whatever the default is. Three. Actually, I think it's variable, isn't it? I think in, since Serial had set it up to be variable, depending on what's available, if I remember right. Sorry, Monty, go ahead. Okay, there. This is um, one of the unique problems. It includes, this is something that will show up in the logs a lot, in Alexios's cases. And it is also related to the crash that has been reported, which I think was bug 2289. Um, that's not going to show up, probably. Yes. And um, which also has um, probably a counterpart in Firestorm 10020. But uh, again, I'm going by memory. Don't trust that. So this one is detecting, for the first time, we're actually able to detect inconsistencies on the viewer side. And that is what this okay. error is so about. Um, why we're getting them, don't know yet. The um, Evidence I see for this is that you're doing a series of text fetches. They're coming down nicely. They're coming down with texture encoding that's chunked. 
which is an HTTP 1.1 standard, which is what we expect and what we've been doing all along. Then all of a sudden, one comes down the pipe, which is not chunked, does not have a contact link header, which means of necessity, it has to be the last thing on the connection. You have to close connection. There is no other marker to say this is the end of the data in the body. And that triggers the, the synchronicity check. There is a bug, I believe, in libcurl, which I'm trying to find, which truncates the data. And it's only now, because we can actually do consistency checks on the viewer, that we're detecting that we're getting short data. So I need to find why the HTTP stream changed, why the libcurl yeah. does what it does, and uh, why it seems that Alexius is one of the only people who can generate this problem. Um, that said, there are a few instances of this bug in our database, but they've only been showing up in the past few days, uh, since late April. Since you released? No, afterwards, days after we oh. release my stuff. So I have no idea what the correlation is. And it's just curious that I'm digging and the investigation is ongoing. Now, the other logs I looked at, which um, were also part of Firestorm 10020, the general HTTP issues you've been having recently, show that you, are, I believe you are using standard HTTP fetch to get your big textures. Right. The problem with this is that they have been reworking, they, Nix and team, have been reworking the retry logic for baked textures, and you don't have it yet. And it's necessary because baked textures change the long, out, long standing in yes. <coughs> linden yes. idioms around uh, texture fetching. And retries have to go on a lot longer, and there is a higher level retry system that is happening, and yes. I don't think you have it yet. And that is essential for reliable baked texture fetching um, at this point. So Nix can pipe in at this point. But my opinion, my advice would be to disable baked texture fetch via HTTP uh, until you can get those changes. Well, we're going to be working on um, a 441 update in the next coming weeks, possibly three weeks, I'll guess, that we can get a release at maybe four. Um, to fix some of these other issues. And um, do you, Nix, do you think you may have that code available within that time frame? Uh, I'm sorry, exactly uh, what time frame were you talking? Um, next three or four weeks. I think it's, I think it's pretty likely uh, we want to make sure that we didn't have any additional changes to push out to you guys uh, for this release that just went out. Um, and I want to make sure that the additional fixes we've been working on get to a slightly more stable point uh, before pushing them out. Um, but I think we should definitely be able to get you guys uh, those changes within that time period. Uh, assuming we're able to get our own branch stable enough uh, where it won't cause you guys more pain than uh, And is it then, Nix or Monty, is it, is it predictable in any way whether or not people with, that are still having these HTTP issues are going to be having major problems with server-side baking? I think that just one, one quick clarification on that that I'm, I'm not sure that has, has, been, has been made explicit enough. Um, the, the HTTP service you're talking to for fetching current baked textures, the client side created baked textures, is to the SIM and and the um, the service you'll be talking to when you're getting the server side baked textures will be a completely separate service. You won't be talking to the same thing. So we shouldn't see I wouldn't expect to see the same set of problems. We may still see problems, but I wouldn't expect to see the same ones. And uh, in particular it shouldn't compete with um, it shouldn't compete with the object textures in the same way. Else that goes to the simulator. Yeah, but if your router is crashing because of too many TCP connections, that will be affected as well. Oh, yeah, I think it's I think it's more complicated than too many connections, but you may be right. <laughs> 
right? I mean, if you've got a well, and that's kind of where my, my router, question is coming from. Is maybe, that right? It, and, and the idea is that if if the answer is yes, that these people will be adversely affected by service side baking because the routers suck, then we at least the Firestorm Project should be making efforts to educate these people that. You know, just because service side baking rolls out and you can't use Second Life, doesn't mean you can never use Second Life. All you got to do is get a better router. Or you can disable HTTP set for regular textures and have that go over UDP and then reserve the HTTP ones for the bakes. If you, if you disable HTTP fetching of regular textures, that will not affect the fetching of the new server side bakes. It will in our code. So the next question then is, and it seems to be that I'm getting that, that, that the answer is yes, these people still have problems. So the next thing is we, we would love to have a list of uh, at least known bad routers. And, and in fact, Oz mentioned that to you guys were working on that. So that'll be really appreciated. Um, and uh, there was one other thing. Um, Actually, I want to ask one question for clarification yeah. before I go too far. So when I read um, your option, user use HTTP bake texture fetch, I may have made an assumption which is incorrect. I assume that this was your implementation of access to server-side baked textures. Is that, in fact, just HTTP access of, te of baked textures? I could be wrong. I'm pretty sure that was one of your debug settings that we turned on. But I could oh, be wrong. The debug setting that we added. What's that? Your tank, you broke up again. The uh, HTTP fetch for uh, um, baked was something that we added. Oh, was it? But that's for uh, the old style of baking textures, not the server side ones, right? It has to be if you're having trouble with it now because the new ones aren't turned on yet. They're, they're not there. Right. As far as I know, when I looked at it, it is uh, fetching the baked fetchers, just using the normal HTTP texture fetch that was already implemented in the code. It's going to the it's going to the same texture fetch as as prim textures, right? It's not. Yes, correct. As far as I right. know, that's what it's doing. Right. It's okay. not going to the new. It's not going to the new avatar bake service. That's um, then my answer changes a little bit. I misread that. Um, so what I did see in the log then is that it is doing a lot of retries, and there is simply the logs are chatty. Uh, there's a when you do merge more recent code, the logging level is going to get knocked down a bit. So you will not see every retry. It will simply tell you at the end whether it recovered successfully or recovered with failure. Most of what I saw in there was recovered successfully. Um, I, uh, you were getting 503s, hitting our services hard enough that you can actually get and receive a 503 from them, and then um, retrying uh, with the exponential hold-off. Um, what needs to be searched in those things is to see if you actually cannot recover all the time. Um, it'll fail hard after uh, eight retries. And if you were seeing that in the logs, this may be something that simply needs to be tuned up. Change the fault retry limit up to 10 or 12 or even a larger number. Um, going out further, we are going to, well, I'm going to look at uh, deeper and longer and slower retries for things which are expected to eventually succeed, but that isn't on any particular time frame or delivery schedule. Um, I certainly use that today. As soon as the other stuff comes under control and starts behaving well, and that's something we'll look at again. But uh, I have over a hundred different HTTP users I have to start dealing with right now. Thank you, Monty. Um, so that sheds a little bit of light on it. Um, the other thing that I wanted to ask uh, Nix or Oz, you guys said that you were going to I have a blog post up in regards to service side baking that we could point to. Uh, yep. 
uh, we're we're still uh, working on that. I'm actually uh, bugging people in the background as this meeting is going on to get a status report. Um, but that is something we're still planning on doing. Uh, okay. I don't have a release date for that just yet. Um, Tom, question. Getting, getting a keep getting, getting a blog subject. post to actually post it is is um, uh, <laughs> lawyers, it's, right? <laughs> it, well, it's. It's approximately it, it's it's approximately three times as difficult as getting a viewer posted. Let's put it this way. <laughs> um, damn, I lost track of my thought. Ah, it worked. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we, yeah, we're, I, I'll see if I can help Nick. Oh yeah, ETA. Um, two weeks. Service I baking. <laughs> hey, everybody's still asking us when is service I making coming out? When is service I making out? And and my act, my my answer is Linden Lab keeps saying the same thing very soon, quote unquote. When it is ready. Yeah, that's that's our standard reply with when is the next viewer coming out? Uh, well, uh, the next. I'll, I'll give you a hint. It's not ready today. <laughs> that helps. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, the the viewer that's in beta now will be the next viewer, the next release viewer that comes out because we haven't changed to the new process yet. Um, and the plan for that one is that it will get at least one update while in beta. So uh, it's, it's certainly not going to be in release any sooner than late next week um, but, I don't but you know guys definitely that... have uh, service side baking viewer side code coming well that's in release but because uh, Nick's had mentioned that unless I misunderstood that you guys do have some more service side baking code oh well there's the always pipeline. fixes right yeah there's, I mean there's always more more we, better changes. We, we will definitely be doing a, another release as part of the server-side baking project um, okay. in order to uh, improve some reliability of some additional ways that baking can fail um, and uh, some HTTP code is going to be in there, some inventory code. Um, but that code is not necessarily uh, critical to be released before we start turning on the service. Well, it's just because we have to have a release out within the next month or so because we had some other problems with the 4.4 release. Really, yeah, that's that's why I'm asking this because um, I'd be interested in trying to coordinate so that we can have the code with our 4.4.1 release or update. Um, and in fact, we may uh, I may hold off the 4.4.1 update until we have that code. I will uh, take that information back to our team and uh, see and let you know when we can get uh, our code stable enough to uh, share so that you guys can take a look at what fixes we have and decide what parts uh, you want to pull in. Thank you. Okay. Uh, so let's move move along a little bit here. Um, FMOD EX is in the 352 beta, uh, and so the sources for it are in fewer beta. Um, the, I have a submission from, uh, I'm spacing who it is, Drake, I think. Um, on uh, some uh, a public packaging mechanism, and I'm in the process of merging that with the packaging mechanism we've been using internally, so that there will be just one. And uh, I will I will get that out into a public repo um, as soon as possible. Um, unfortunately, I'm a little swamped with three heavy duty projects going on simultaneously right now. Um, but sooner or later, I'll get that out. The one that uh, Drake has been working, has been using works, so there's no reason not to use it for doing your FMODX builds. Um, 
I would just like there to be one that we're all using if I can get there. Um, and I don't think that's going to be impossible. Um, I think the five ox up upgrade, which I had expected to be in the same build turned out not to be ready. So that's still in the pipeline. Um, and, and we'll be coming along somewhere along the line soon. Um, materials, uh, I talked about a little bit before. Um, it's still at alpha status, but improving very rapidly. Uh, and, uh, that's, that's coming up. Um, so that code will be ready for you to start playing with pretty soon. I mean, you can play with it now, but I wouldn't, I would, I would expect it to continue changing, uh, is what I will say about that. Um, and other things on our, the other thing on our perpetual list is, is group bands. I checked with Baker this morning, uh, and he doesn't have anything to share on that yet, but he's, um, he, he has gotten pulled off to fix some problems with the people API, which I think will be good to have fixed. Um, and, uh, but then he'll be back on that shortly. So. Support uh, mentioned, our support mentioned um, a couple of users saying that they had filed abuse reports and avatars by the name of Governance 1 Linden, Governance 2 Linden showed up. Is uh, there a new effort in reestablishing a governance team? I have, I, I would be completely guessing. I, I have absolutely no visibility into how that stuff works. Um, anyway, it looked promising, and the fact that somebody actually showed up is fantastic. <laughs> yeah, that's good. I, I, I like to hear good stories about that stuff. Um, but uh, could have been just luck. I don't know. I, I won't click on that one. Yeah, I think I'm with you there. Um, with Linda. Okay, so I no guess less. we have we have covered the agenda in the time allotted. So, have we got anything else that needs to be discussed, or go back and rehash any of the existing stuff? Uh, how much time you got? <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm. Uh, uh, it is Friday afternoon. Uh, I think you chose Friday afternoons specifically so that people want to go. You're on to me. <laughs> Actually, honest. Um, throw some people over to help Baker, please. That's the only thing that I'd like to ask. Yeah. Yeah. yeah uh, I, I would. I would love to be able to do that. Unfortunately, allocating server side development resources is not something they've empowered me with yet. Um, Oh, but uh, with the program. Baker is a Baker is a is is a, a, a doggedly persistent kind of a guy, uh, and uh, you can count on the fact that it'll eventually happen. Yeah, I just now, um, Oz, to this a little person. Yeah, we have this person still bothering us. Our groups. Oz, you um, have you filed a feature request yet? on the Linden Jira about um, the slural thing that we talked about earlier in the week. A slural thing. See, I knew it. I knew you'd forget. A crazy week. <laughs> you mentioned that you'd be interested in working on it, which was being able to um, create landmarks from slurls or from map. Oh, yeah. That's always irritated yeah, you, me. you gotta file. you got to file a Jira or it'll get forgotten. Uh, we have one. I found it. There's a there's an old VWR for Oh, is there? Oh, really? Of yeah. course, would know it. Yeah, <laughs> there we go. See? <laughs> I should have guessed. <laughs> all, all, I, all I had to do was say there was a Jira. Um, <laughs> no, I had actually I, I did actually follow up on our conversation, and I went back and I and I I dug that out. Um, and uh, I don't know that that may be one of the things that I'm going to try exercising my my newfound uh server foo to to work on at some point do you got an eta on that 
<laughs> you know better than to ask me for ETAs. When it's ready, um, Jess. When it's ready. Yeah. Um, but, you know, um, going to be getting out of the, the viewer repository management business, so I'm going to have more free time. Well, Kitty, it needs some um, server support, too. Because it has yeah, to it create doesn't. a landmark asset. That, yeah, and it, there's something about it. Yeah, I mean, it, it has to create the asset. It was attempted back in the Emerald days, and uh, and it was realized that it needs server support. Oh, I will not be the final merge person. See, that's the that's the the not at all subtle hidden agenda here. Um, not very well hidden, in fact, agenda. That means uh, you'll have time to help us merge Chewy into Firestorm. I'm definitely not going there. <laughs> um, <laughs> I've had enough trouble merging it into materials. Um, the, uh, no, I mean, each project will be doing their own merges out from release to their project repository. So there is no longer a central person pulling merges together. Instead, we're go they're going in the other direction. Yeah. We got any other topics? Hope everybody has a good weekend. Weather? We could talk about the weather if you wanted to stick around for a while, Oz. Oh, we have some nice weather. I, it's too beautiful here to talk about the weather. I'd rather go out and be in it. I'm I'm in my backyard right now, in it. Is Bonky still around, or did he disappear on me? Still here. Still there. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, I just sent him a few comments there about what I saw just now. Uh. Okay, I think we're good. Thanks, we're everybody. Stealing here. All right. <laughs> Uh, Worley, I will catch you. Uh, actually, we're going to have to... Worley, is Worley still here? Yeah. Worley, I'm going to have to put triage off until after I eat dinner. So, like, two hours. <laughs> yeah, I just want to make sure that Monty got my comments. The server is still closing connection. It's still forced close. I just tested it to keep alive. And it's forcing close on me, so I don't know what's going on behind that one, but I figure I'll let you know. Well, depending on what's going on, it's meant to close it. In some cases, I didn't see what you were post. You were um, trying to fetch. Uh, if I remember correctly, it was just textures, not mesh, but just textures. And unfortunately, I lost the original get call for that one. It's back, way back in my scroll back log. <laughs> okay, I gotta poof for a bit. Need the. Uh, get for that i can probably get it it'll take, take me a little time to go through here if, oh wait a minute i got a search function here maybe i can find it if i find it i'll paste it real quick let's see uh oh shoot. i forgot i don't have a search on this Oh, wait a I found it. I found it. Ooh, I found it. I found the information you're looking for. It's one of these two. I don't know which one. But let me do a quick...